What would you do differently speaking to the bachelor in you? Other than other than all of the crazy things that we've been talking about, I mean, um, we're not just talking about relationships and how do you deal with uh, with the, the opposite sex and all that kind of stuff. But what would you? What else would you actually tell your younger self that? Siguro, there were certain things that you wanted to try that you hesitated to try. Like, for example, oh, man, you should have told your younger self to bungee jump. You know, things like that. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that that that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> bungee jumping, the the getting, you know, like in order uh, going back to what Chappie said, not at the risk of repeating what he said. It's 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 about you need to discover who you are, and I like the way you put it, where you were always Chappie end. Yeah, you mm. just be just Chappie for a while. Be just James. Be just Brian. Um, get to know that person, and then you'll know what more, what you have to give as well. You, you'll be able to give more because exactly, you know yeah. about you know yourself. yourself. Yeah. yeah. So that I don't, I wouldn't necessarily say I, I regret anything like that um, because I went from the extreme from from that that Kerry Koala story. We went. I had one more crazy episode, two more crazy episodes, <laughs> and they were sabay sabay. So like really closely <laughs> spaced together. <laughs> it was really bad. There was one. There was one. Can I tell you very super? Quick? Go right, go go go. Okay, Melissa. All right. <laughs> there is a name. All right. Yeah. I was, I was. I tell you, I was young. I was. I was a no. I was a DJ at the time in a in a nightclub type of thing, and um, so. After Carrie got crazy, there was Sandy, and then there was a, this girl called Melissa. Anyway, Melissa would come to the bar all the time, and she, I guess I didn't really pick up on it, but apparently she had a crush on me that I didn't kind of pick up on. So I was like being uh, with other girls and, you know, flirting and doing my thing with the, the DJing. And um, one of the waitresses couldn't stand Melissa. And Melissa would come every night, right, to the bar. Mm -hmm. And she couldn't stand her, right? She well, hated her. But of course, you couldn't do anything because that's a you know customer. So uh, anyway, one day, <laughs> patron, eh? yeah, <laughs> Melissa, uh, the people would sell roses, you know, in the bars, and they would come in and sell you a rose and stuff like that. And so one of the vendors walked in and was selling rose, and Melissa bought one rose and she gave it to me. She, mm. said, she walked to my DJ booth and she <laughs> goes, <"Nux." laughs> and yeah, here, here, I, I got you this. I was like, hey, thank you, and I put it. You know, I was busy. I was working, so I was, you know, I grabbed it. So if you picture it, you, I grabbed rose, smiled, said thank you, uh, put it away, and then started doing my thing and all that. And next up, we have such and such singing such and such song, blah 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 blah. And then Caroline, who was the waitress, comes over, and she's that's where she used to take her smoke -o break. Inside my DJ booth, mm. it's the '90s. You were allowed. To <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were. Yeah. So she comes up and she's like having a smoke break, and she looks and she sees the rose and she goes, "Hmm, nice rose. Where'd you get that?" I was like, "Oh, M Melissa gave it to me." Oh, okay. And then she didn't say anything more. She says, "You know, are you gonna keep it?" And I was like, "Well, you know, I mean, uh, I, I don't really have a place." <laughs> I, I can if see you're not, where this yeah. is going. Oh no! Yeah, because, you know, if you're not gonna keep it, I'd love it. You know, if you, you know. So I said, yeah, yeah, sure, you can have it. You can have it. It's it's fine. It, but, like, I'm busy. I'm working with everything. But, yeah, take the rose. I'm not going to use it. Well, she took the rose, right? And she went behind the bar, and she started sniffing the rose. Melissa's sitting at the bar. And Melissa's staring at her like, <laughs> I'm going to kill you. That looks familiar. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't see anyone else with a rose in this place. So she goes, nice rose. Where'd you get, where'd you get the rose? She goes, James gave it to me. Oh! Oh! Ah! oh! <laughs> Girl fight. James is completely oblivious, by the way. He's, <laughs> he's singing Endless Love with some <laughs> patron, right? And um, Melissa walks out. I even wave. Bye. <laughs> I don't know, right? I, I, I do not know what I'm about oh. to get myself into. Now, after work at this bar, I would always go to another bar where every night we would just have an unwinding drink there and until because they were open till 3. And... Everyone, all the regulars of this place, because there were only two karaoke bars in Perth at the time. So everyone would go to this other bar. I went there. My brother was a doorman. He was the bouncer there. So I walked in. Everybody knew who I was because it's a small place. And yeah, I knew who they were. They knew who I was. So I walked in. Hi, everyone. And this bottle goes flying across the thing. It's <laughs> Melissa. Oh. She throws this bottle of beer. I duck. It just misses my head. Smashes oh. above my head. 
My brother has to grab her and throw her out of the bar because, of course, you can't go throwing bottles of beer around the people. Throws her out of the bar. Security come. They take her away. All right. So she's gone. I'm shaking. Yeah. (laughs) I got a first name basis with security all around the (laughs) bar. Oh, it's you. (laughs) Hey, James, what's up? (laughs) Hey, yeah, (laughs) Mike. So I I was shaking and all that. Okay. So I even stayed behind for like another 30 minutes after closing. It's like, are you sure it's safe? Yeah, yeah, it's safe. (laughs) So my brother walks me to my car, and my car is covered in sand. Oh, there was a con- no. I parked near a construction site. I don't know how this woman managed to dump <laughs> sand all over my car. And after that, I started becoming like, you know, okay, that's when I started clinging to normalcy. And <laughs> this has got to end. Oh, my goodness. I know. Oh, my. Grab a your Dude. That's, that's, that's... <laughs> so what would I tell my bachelor self? Y- yes, please. Don't go out. Just stay home. Play video games. <laughs> I don't know. Um, uh, oh, what, is, what is it about What is it about the past that, always, that we always go back to? I mean, that's. I know that experience and um, experience has always been the best teacher for all of us. And why is it that? We always look to the past. I, this is just a passing question. Why is it that we always look to the past it's, 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 for, for answers? It's human nature. Eh? Parang it's us asking what if. It's always There's always that wonder of, okay, what if I just did this? What if I just did that? Would we be in a different place? And I think it's, that's, that's just human nature of wondering, would things be different? Would things be better oh, if I didn't do this or that? Like if I didn't date when I was 12. When I, didn't. <laughs> I still can't get over that. <laughs> because if we don't learn from history, we're cursed to repeat it. And if you don't want the same thing happening over and over again, you will do something to change that. Now, while we can't go back to yeah. the past, we can certainly make the same decisions with or different decisions based on those circumstances so that's why because we see the cause and effect of everything yeah. i think that's that's how everything works now it's it's healthy if you keep it in a certain perspective because you can only make decisions based on a certain time and place and the information you have at that time so don't go beating yourself up when you can't make that same decision today there's nothing similar about it everything you're making a decision based on a set of circumstances that may never ever align again Okay. Time, place, circumstances. Yeah. Now, the reason why I ask that question is how come that there are some people, especially in terms of relationships, and you know, it, you know, men, women doesn't matter. How come they, some of them, commit the same mistakes? Okay, <laughs> like you can you can go back and say, okay, I wish I didn't cheat that night because I made a stupid, foolish mistake. I mean, that that's a good place to go with saying, okay, I wish I could turn back time and and change that oh, because yeah. you made a really stupid mistake that you would have not normally done. Um, but if you are just doing that because you just got caught and you're not changing anything about the root cause of that behavior, then you are going to be destined to repeat it. I think we had this conversation um, in the first season also. Uh, how come you're always looking for the bad boy? How come you're always looking for the uh, good boy? Yeah, that's right. right that's right. That's right. Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of it also has to do with your past circumstances, like what James said. And you always go back into that default mode mm-hmm. of either looking for normalcy in this in this example or maybe something more extravagant or something more adventurous and familiar. i think we all yeah or yeah there you go you familiar. really crave familiarity yes. and if you grew up with uh, your parents being the such and such and then you crave that same thing in your relationship so yeah it, it, it we are a product of our circumstances in our past and now that you you you've mentioned that how do you move to make certain changes in yourself. To be better. Yeah, to be better. How do you make that? How do you make that first step? Because some people, they still fumble on the same mistakes because they don't know how to make that first step yeah. into making that big change. How do you go about that? Well, well yeah, there's, oh. No, because it, yeah, no, okay, we're, we're not, we're not therapists. We're not, look, disclaimer, like, we're not therapists. Yeah. We're not psychologists. And we're not charging for this. So. <laughs> yeah, we're just, yeah. we're just speaking from experience. But uh, no, I would, I would think that the first thing is to see the pattern. Because there will be a pattern emerging, and you have to be aware of that pattern. Uh, I, for me, I think that will be the first step. And I saw that pattern in, early on in my life. I was, lo- I was always looking for broken people mm. because I wanted to fix it. Savior complex. The savior yeah, exactly. complex. Exactly. Yeah, actually, I I wanted, we're the same. I'm okay, like that there, too. There you go. So I, because I wanted to fix them, uh, did it make me a better person? I don't know. Did it make them be- better people? I don't know. But 
I found that pattern. And once you're aware of that pattern, it's up to you. Can, do you want to change or do you, wanna, do you not want to change? The hardest thing to do in life, even if it's inevitable, is change. And yeah. people really, you know, you go through this and you face this on a daily basis. But it's, it's really a constant decision and a, and a very conscious decision if you want to change. And it's not going to be perfect every time. You're going to need the support system. You're going to need people knowing you, knowing your, uh, no, your circumstances. You have to share with people because they need to know, ah, oh, this is your trigger. Or you're falling into the same pattern. They have to call you out. So to me, know the pattern. Tell people about your pattern if you really want to change it. If you really, because some people want to stay in that pattern. And that's all good if you want to stay in that pattern. But if you really want to change it, let it be known and let other people help you. You can't, it's hard to do it on your own. Mm. And then you have the added problems of you can dial that problem up even further if your partner is manipulative. Oh my goodness. And actually manipulates yeah. and exploits those savior complex, for example. True, they true. know that. Let's say they're, they're, they're aware of it. There's so many intricacies in a relationship, which is why, I mean, get to know yourself. We go back to getting to you know yourself because, you know, when you enter a relationship, you're going to you're going to be carrying somebody else's baggage, too. Yeah. Now, if you haven't figured yourself out, oh, my God, good luck. Good luck <laughs> with your relationship because you're going to you're going to be trying to figure yourself out. Plus your partner, yeah. plus the dynamic between the two of you. So don't go in prepared. At least get to know one of you in that relationship. <laughs> and then you can work on, on everything else. Because like Coach said about patterns, um, I can't help but think that when you're saying they fall back in the same thing, if you're not going after the root cause, let's just use, the, let's say, the cheating as an example. Mm. If you're just, you know, stopping the cheating because, okay, you got caught, that's not the reason. That's... That's really you're just oh, your damn, yeah. yeah. I, I I'll, I'll do it differently. I'll wipe my messages this time. I'll use Telegram or something instead of <laughs> SMS or something like that. But no, that's not actually solving the problem. Why are you straying to begin with? Yeah. What's wrong? Uh, do you really want to be in this relationship, or you know, at least to thine own self be true, as Shakespeare always said. Understand that sometimes it's an ugly truth, but at least know it. Know it. You don't even have to, you don't even owe that truth to anyone else but yourself. Let's just say you are a cheating person. Accept it within yourself. Tell yourself, okay, this is who I am, and then try to make yourself better. But don't lie to yourself. Don't say, no, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a good guy. No, no. Understand who you are, faults and all, and then work on changing them if you really want to. Mm. But if you're just doing it to please other people, it's never going to stick, yes. ever. Okay, this is, this is actually really good because there are uh, middle-aged bachelors out there uh, <clears throat> like myself, <laughs> I, you know, uh, sadly, who are afraid to make that first step. Yeah, you know, it, yeah. it, 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 it could be a, ver a variety have, of reasons. Yeah, yeah. You have a daughter too, who's yeah. um, of dating age now. So, yeah. So th she sees you in a different light, maybe. Like she, she could sit there and judge your dating, and <laughs> yeah. nobody wants that from their kids. <laughs> that's true. You're also. doing that wrong, Dad. Okay, okay but yeah. but that, that's see, that's that's the funny thing with with uh, well, my, my daughter, for instance, she's very encouraging when it comes to things like that. But she was always, but she's always very protective because she knows the kind of relationships I've had. Uh, my, my last three relationships were just simply horrible. They they ended really bad, and she would always be very protective of somebody I would be interested in. But like for example, hey, she's pretty. Yeah, dad, but you know, and then she says she starts analyzing uh, yeah, yeah. this person, and she all of a sudden the the series of butts start coming coming along. But dad, she's but dad, she's you know th th those kinds of things, and I understand that she's being very protective. But at the end of the day, it's also my conscious decision to make that leap of faith. Now, making that leap of faith could be a decision that could change certain things. But then again, I'm thinking ahead of myself, so I. I uh, I think bottom line for, 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 for a lot of the bachelors out there who are afraid of dating now because there are a lot of I was surprised to know that there are a lot of bachelors uh, in their middle ages who who are who are scared to make that step in, in you know in, 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 in putting themselves out in the market. Yeah. Well, everyone's afraid of rejection for a start. I, I don't think even the most confident person in the world is afraid of rejection. Mm -hmm. It's a natural thing to to abhor or fear. But if you are, I, I said something earlier, which I want to go back to about confidence. Um, there, when you when you look like you're desperate, or when you look like you're, mm -hmm. even if you go back to kids, right? You can the kid. Nobody's interested in that toy till somebody else is interested in it, mm, right? It's right. like. All of a sudden, if you 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 gotta play it a little bit cool, 
be comfortable with your own surroundings. So that that attracts other people. People are like, hey, Brian seems like he's just so happy on his own. Let's go and screw that up. <laughs> That's a very bad way of putting it. But you know what I mean? But if Brian or, or, or Adam or whatever yeah. example you use, looks like, you know, every time I... Man, me. Oh,